Stellt euch mal. Okay. Okay. Okay, now are the visits, the Southern Kingdom. <clears throat> this was correct. श्री परीक्षित वाच तथो नपवरम दृष्टुम तद देशे नारदो प्रजा देव पूजो देव पूजो सवास तास तत्र तत्र क्षत प्रजाह श्री परीक्षित सर नारद देन वेंट टू द कंट्री ऑफ दैट बेस्ट ऑफ किंग्स टू सी हिम वेरेवर नारद वेंट ही फाउंड द पीपल अब्जॉर्ब इन फेस्टिव वर्शिप ऑफ द लॉर्ड वर्शिप संभाषि <coughs> Yosa Brahman, the Brahman, and the Shasha made the deal with her, and told this king about, uh, told uh, Narada Muni about this king. So he said, "The Dakshina Deshe, yeah, it's a thing. Yeah, Dukkam Devo Puja, the Dukkam. So, to be a Dukkam Sampashi Narada Muni. He experienced that uh, the the king and his kingdom was more glorious than what that Vipra had spoken." So it was fact. It was not that he just spoke some things out of humility. Narada praises the Sadan king. In Narada Vacha, Pam Shri Krishna Kripa Patram Yasya Drik Rajya Vai Bhavam Saloka Guna Dharma Artha Jnana Bhakti Vira Vittam. So Narada said, "You are the real recipient of Shri Krishna's mercy. After all, your kingdom is so opulent. It has the best citizens, endowed with the most excellent character, religiousness, prosperity." Knowledge and devotion to God. Yes, yet our son, Vid Utkrishtai Loka Devi Ranvitam Tatra Loka Prajaha. It has such excellent uh, uh, citizens. Tatra Loka Prajaha. The Sham Sattva Purvokte Na Swadharmani Maratve Na. The Vipra had already described them, their character as being fixed. On their swadharma, guna ha sarvatra bhagavat bhakti pravartan adi na loka vatsali ada yaha. They were uh, having various excellent qualities. 
They were very much interested in propagating devotion service under the Supreme Personality of Godhead everywhere. They were very affectionate to the uh, to uh, the world. The king was filled with affection for his uh, kingdom. And they did not, they were not proud. Dharma, Bhikshuka Adi Bhyaha, Annadana Adi Krita, Tesham Chuk Bhagavad Arpanadina. The king had arranged for charity to be given to uh, begging sannyasis and so on. And those food stuffs were also offered to the Supreme Personality of God. Artaha Dhanani, Tesham Bhagavad Puja Dragya Sadhana Tavina. Filled with uh, prosperity. What did he do with that prosperity? He used it as a means to procure ingredients with which to worship the Supreme Personality of God. Utkrishtaha Kamaha. He had already stated that uh, the facility to enjoy the opulence of his kingdom uh, was very much there. That is now very clearly stated here. Jnanam satchastra abhyasa janito mokshadi hitur viveka. Endowed with knowledge. Um, the opulence of his kingdom was endowed with, amongst other things, knowledge. That knowledge refers to the sort of distinction that is, um, that sort of discriminatory knowledge that is the cause for attaining liberation and so on, which is born out of um, repeated. Uh, studies of spiritual scriptures. Tasya Bhagavat Puja Paratadina. And uh, this was because he was focused on the worship of the Supreme Personality of God, of Krishna Bhagavat Seva. And they had devotion to God, which means they were absorbed in devotional service unto the Supreme Personality of God. Tasya Asya Premaiva Kriya Mahatvat. And that also, that service to the Supreme Lord was being executed with affection. Iti dik. These are some indication of what Nardamani means. A sure sign of a ruler's virtue is the good qualities of his subjects. Yatha Raja, Tatha Praga. <clears throat> so if the king, or if the ruler, if the governor, if the chief administrator, <laughs> is spiritually weak, his subjects will also be spiritually weak. The people of this kingdom were not merely decorated with a veneer of culture, they were actually civilized according to Vedic standards. The good citizens did their prescribed duties responsibly. They contributed to the general welfare by working, each as he was able to introduce Krishna conscious practices everywhere, abandoning pride and other godless tendencies. They gave charity by feeding sannyasis and hungry people, used extra wealth for offerings in worship of the Supreme Lord, and studying the Vedic scriptures from which they learned the value of liberation and devotional service. Devotional service meaning pure devotional service. The people aspired to become pure devotees of the Lord. Thus they realized all the goals of human life, religiosity, economic development, sense gratification, liberation, and pure Krishna consciousness. This is what is meant by preaching. And uh, uh, the Krishna consciousness movement of Prabhupada, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, and Sachidananda Bhakti Nantha Kuraim said nothing less than this. People should be organized in such a manner that they can progress towards the highest perfection of Krishna consciousness. Sri Parikshadu Vacha, Tattat Vistariya Gathayam, Ashlishin Bhupatim Mukhu, Prashashamsa Gunangayan, Vinaya Vaishnava Tamaha. Sri Parikshad said, Narada, the best of Vaishnavas, singing along with his Vina, thus expansively described. The king praising his greatness and now they embraced him again and again. Tattat Rajya Vai Bhavadi Kamu Guna Bhagavad Bhajanadi Bhajanadi Rupa Antra Shashamsa. 
स्वामी श्री कृष्ण से परम कृपा पात्र उत्तरे By the weight of hearing his own praise, Nijeshraka ti shayena uchayil jata ya lajja ya amitam mastakam ye nai yase va saha. Already included here. The king refutes Narada's praise. <coughs> Devar shail paayusham swalpai shwariyam alpa pradam naram aswatantram bhayakram tam tapatrayam niyantritam. कृष्ण That in the future he might show me his mercy. Why do you wrongly consider me an object of his compassion? They were saying, "Hey, Sri Narada, O sage among the demigods, O Narada, O Sri Narada, Naram Nam Tadiya Karunaya Sri Krishna Anugrahasya Patrun Kacham Avichara Tar Avichara Makritto Ivo Bhavan Manyate." What did you actually mean by you did not carefully consider uh, about? who is a proper recipient of shri krishna's mercy and therefore you are thinking like this aswatantram swadharma acharaadi paradhinam krishna se yat anugraha vakyam vam anugrahishyami ityadi rupam dasyapi ayogyam anarham i am not independent my engagement in my Swadharma, my own material duties, and so on, my conduct. This is dependent on others. I am unfit to even hear uh, a benediction from Krishna. I will benedict you in the future. Asya pe yogya mana kham astu tava dhanu grihasya. Yadwa asmin Krishna grihao asti. इति वचनस्य अपि अयोग्य विषय आई एम इवन अनफिट टू बी डिस्क्राइब्ड एज अ पर्सन हु हैज रिसीव्ड कृष्णस मर्सी कुतस्त संपत्ति लक्षणस्य वेयर डू यू सी एनी कैरेक्टरिस्टिक ऑफ मी प्रोसेसिंग द प्रॉस्पेरिटी ऑफ हिज मर्सी अतः केवल आविचारेण निवैतत कथयसि इति भाव दैट वुड बी इंप्लाइज दैट यू डिड नॉट थिंक केयरफुली एंड यू सिंपली सेड समथिंग The king thought Narada could have mistaken him to be a favored devotee of Krishna's own. only by failing to see his natural good discretion. Before becoming a pure devotee, one has to be free. One has to free oneself from illusion. But the king's opinion of himself was that he was still Maya's slave, subject to the tyranny of natural beauties. What to speak of having realized his relationship with Lord Krishna? He felt he did not even deserve that. The Lord promised, "I will show you my favor someday." Or understanding Krishna and Brahma Vakya say in another sense, he did not deserve to have anyone say this person is favored by Krishna. The king directs Narada to the demigods. Deva eva daya patram Vishnu Malvata chila pujya mana narayane kiyam tejo maya shari dina. The demigods are the real objects of the supreme Lord Vishnu's mercy. They have. They fill their bodies and are always worshipable by men. Narey rasma bhi spachan dena nijay chay yaiva. Ah, where is that? Okay, no. 
No debería ser un hombre. They are always worshipful by men. Meaning they are always worshipful by us. Nishpapa satpikad ukhar rahita sukhina sata swachanda chara gata yo bhakti cha varada yaka. They are sinless, fixed in goodness, free from distress, and always happy. They act and travel however they like. They give their blessings by granting what their devotees desire. Swachandena, Nije Chayeva, Acharu Gatishchit Kamanam Yesham Te. Their conduct and their movements are according to their own desires. Manishavat Vithi Paratan Triadya Bhava, because they are not under um, regulations like human beings. Akasha Marta Kamit Acha, because they travel through the air spaces. They grant the benedictions as per their own desires. No, as per the desires of their devotees, meaning their servants. And there's not any exaggeration here. This is not just some, some bias exaggeration. <coughs> Show you. This is Bali Maharaj about to attack the heavenly kingdom. He's being blessed. He departs for the opulent capital of Indra, which is now being described. King Indra's city was full of pleasing orchards and gardens such as the Nandana garden. Because of the weight of the flowers, leaves and fruit, the branches of the eternally existing trees were bending down. The gardens were visited by pairs of chirping birds and singing bees. The entire atmosphere was celestial. Beautiful women protected by the demigods sported in the gardens which had lotus ponds full of swans, cranes, chakravatas and ducks. The city was surrounded by trenches full of Ganges water known as Akasha Ganga and by a high wall, which was the color of fire. Upon this wall were parapets or fighting. The doors were made of solid gold plates and the gates were of excellent marble. These were linked by various public roads. The entire city had been constructed by Vishwakarma. The city was full of courtyards, wide roads, assembly houses, and not less than 100 million airplanes. The crossroads were made of pearl, and they were, there were sitting places made of diamond and coral. Everlastingly beautiful, youthful women who were dressed with clean garments, glittered in the city like fires with flames. They all possessed the quality of Shyama. The breezes blowing in the streets of the city bore the fragrance of the flowers falling from the hair of the woman of the demigods. Asaras passed on the streets which were covered with the white fragrant smoke of Aguru incense emanating from windows with golden filigree. The city was shaded by canopies decorated with pearls. The domes of the palaces had flags of pearl and gold. The city always resounded with the vibrations of peacocks, pigeons, and bees. And above the city flew airplanes full of beautiful women who constantly chanted auspicious songs that were very pleasing to the ear. The city was filled with the sounds of mridangas, conch shells, kettle drums, flutes, and well-tuned stringed instruments all playing in concert. concert. There was constant dancing and the Gandharva sang. The combined beauty of Indra Puri defeated beauty personified. Now you may say, so what? Now, well, listen to this. Yamna Vrajantya Dharmishtha Kalabhuta Drahashatha Marina Kamino Lugdha Evirkina Vrajanti Yat. No one who was sinful, envious, violent toward other living entities, cunning, falsely proud, lusty or greedy could enter that city. The people who lived there were devoid of these faults. This is the place that, that is uh, the city of Indra. So there's no, it is not that uh, 
sorry. Um, there's no exaggeration here. They are similar, fixed and goodness, free from distress and always happy. Therefore, this the nectar of immortality, which does away with such miseries as death, disease, and old age. Though not forced by hunger or thirst, the demigods enjoy great satisfaction in parting on this nectar by their own sweet will. Yesham Devanam Rityu Roda Jaradi Harati Pitahaka Tadishabdena Klama Sweta Gaugan Tyadi. Which does away with such miseries as indicates that uh, you can also, this nectar of immortality also. Uh, does away with um, exhaustion, perspiration, um, stink, stench. You don't feel there's no any unwholesome um, or bad smell, and so on. Now, na hi deva nam chudhati pira vartate sada sukhi na itya dite tadha bhavicha bhoga na sukhda. One might object. That, uh, um, it stated that they are always happy, and it is stated that they don't have any, uh, they're not tormented by hunger and so on. But in the absence, how can uh, enjoyment be uh, give rise to happiness? Even though they do not have hunger and so on. Simply out of their own happiness, they enjoy by eating this. Vasanti Bhagavan Swarge Mahabhagyam Balena Ye Yondrim Hir Bharate Varshe Satpunye Labhyate Kattai O godly Narada, on the strength of their good fortune, they live in the realm of heaven, which humans on earth can attain only by perfect, pious work. Hey Bhagavan, so oh powerful, Sri Narada, Sri Narada, Ye Deva, Yaswarga, Marate Varshe, Kratehi Sadhir, Utkrishtaihi Punyehi Kratwa, Evam Narebhya Devana, Vaipurityokya, Bhagavad Daya Patrata Sadhita. So, this, these Devas, this Swarga, all of this can be attained when uh, one executes. Pious activities. Uh, by saintly persons in Bharata Varsha. So in this way, by contrasting the humans and the devas, he has established that the devas are the recipients of the compassion of the Supreme Personality of Lord. Yataha Naranam Alpa Yushpadikam Uptam because human beings have been described as having a short span of life and so on. Devanam Chamrityu Haram Rutta Bhogena Bhakwa Yushpa. However, the devas have been described as having a long span of life because they can enjoy the nectar which takes away death. Narayan nitya pujyat padina cha maheshwaryam bhakti cha varadane na cha bahu pradhatpam svachanda achara gatitpena parva swatantriya mitipi. There's also an indication here that uh, they have great opulence because they are being worshipped and so on constantly by human beings and they are um, and they award benedictions to uh, their um, devotees according to their desires. So from this we understand that they are very charitable, they give a lot. And uh, we also understand that because their movements and their conduct 
or independent. They are exceptionally um, independent in their behavior. Narana Mapi Deva Vai Parityena Anyatapi Lakshana Mursyam. And uh, from uh, if one contemplates further, we can discover further contrasts between human beings and the devas. Eva Magretu. This is, this is implied even in the future. The saintly king proposes that the demigods are the most favored devotees of Krishna. To demonstrate this, he contrasts them with ordinary human beings. Humans like himself acknowledge the superiority of the demigods and worship him in Vedic sacrifices. The demigods less encumbered than humans by physical restraints are free to travel as they like, even flying in the sky without vehicles. Some rich and powerful humans may be famous for charity, but the demigods have universal powers by which they can fulfill all their worshippers' desires. The soma nectar, the demigods drink, frees them from death, disease, and old age. And as implied by the word Adi and so on, also from fatigue, perspiration, bodily order, and other embarrassments. Since the demigods are never hungry or thirsty, one might question what benefit they derive from drinking their soma. The king answers that they enjoy soma very much. Their pleasure is much, it is more subtle than the undermine the gratification of ordinary eating and drinking. Compared with the mortals of earth, the inhabitants of heaven seem immortal and independent. They must therefore be most dear to Lord Krishna. Now, it is not that there is no basis to this. There is a basis to this. Uh, we see this even in Krishna book. <clears throat> Here, for instance, uh, Let's see. See, from Lord Brahma down to the end, they exhibit their spiritual, uh, he exhibits his spiritual potency according to his present body. Uh, where is that? One more place. I'm not getting it right now. Yes. Here. Here, here, here. This is the one. This is the one. The living entities <coughs> are of two kinds. One class is called Nitya Mukta, ever liberated. The other is called Nitya Baddha, ever conditioned. The Nitya Mukta living entities are in the spiritual kingdom and the Nitya Baddhas are in the material world. In the spiritual world, both the living entities and the Lord are manifest in their original status like life sparks in a blazing fire. But in the material world, although the Lord is all pervasive in his impersonal feature, the living entities have forgotten their Krishna consciousness to a greater or lesser degree, just as sparks sometimes fall from a blazing fire and lose their original brilliant condition. The sparks fall into different conditions and retain more or less of their original brilliance. Some sparks fall onto dry grass and thus ignite another big fire. This is a reference to the pure devotees who take compassion on the poor and innocent li living entities. The pure devotee ignites Krishna consciousness in the hearts of the conditioned souls, and thus the blazing fire of the spiritual world becomes manifest even within this material world. Some sparks fall onto water, immediately lose their original brilliance and become extinct. They are comparable to the living entities who take their birth in the midst of gross materialists, in which case their original Krishna consciousness becomes extinct. Some sparks fall on the ground and remain midway between the blazing and extinct conditions. Thus, some living entities are without Krishna consciousness. Some are between having and not having Krishna consciousness, 
and some are actually situated in the Krishna consciousness. So notice three types. Some are Krishna unconscious. Some are partially Krishna conscious, partially Krishna unconscious. And some are actually situated in Krishna consciousness. Notice this now. The demigods in the higher climates, Lord Brahma, Indra, Chandra, the sun god and various other demigods are all Krishna conscious. So this is their proper Krishna consciousness. Human society is between the demigods and the animals. And thus, some humans are more or less Krishna conscious and some are completely forgetful of Krishna consciousness. The third grade living entities, namely the animals, beasts, plants, trees and aquatics have completely forgotten Krishna consciousness. This example stated in the Vedas regarding the sparks of a blazing fire is very appropriate for understanding the condition of different types of living entities. But above all other living entities is the Supreme Personality of God, Krishna or Purushottama, who is always liberated from all material condition. So uh, one cannot easily dismiss uh, the idea that the demigods are Krishna conscious. They are Krishna conscious. If one is not sufficiently Krishna, Krishna conscious, you cannot end up as a demigod. You do not get the body of a demigod unless you are sufficiently Krishna conscious. The king points out Indra is the best demigod. Mune Vishishta Satrapi Tesham Indra Purandraha Nigrahe Nagrahe Pisho Vrishti Bhir Lokaji Manaha. A year sage, the most distinguished of these demigods is Purandara Indra. He has full power to reward and punish, and he gives the world life by providing rain. Tatra Tasmin Swarge Teshu Deveshwapi Vishishtaha Daya Vishesha Patra Vityardaha. The most distinguished means the one uh, who is especially the recipient of Sri Krishna's Daya, mercy. Nigrihe Shapadana Do, Anagrihe Varadana Do, Chaishaha Samartaha. He is capable of cursing and so on. He is capable of fulfilling benedictions and so on. Devanamcha Bhakti Chaya Varadaya Katpa Matra Muktam Indra Sechatat Anapekshaya Tatopya Dhikadana Di Samarthi Dite Bhyo Vishesha. The devas have been described as um, having uh, the capacity to grant the benedictions desired by their devotees. Despite that, without taking that into consideration, Indra has greater capacity to, to uh, curse effectively, or to bless effectively. So that is the distinction between him and the rest of the devas. Lokanji Vete Samvadhayati Atha. He gives the world life by providing rain, he enriches the world, he <coughs> helps the world grow. Purandara is the name of the current king of heaven. Doki Shwarataya Yugana make us up to him. He rules the three planetary systems for 71 celestial ages. Length of sovereignty, no mundane king could earn, even by 100 horse sacrifices. Atasa Chatur Yuganam Ekotar Saptatim Yapya Yasya Interasya Trilokya Ishwarya Ya. There is reasons why he is saying all these things. Um, he, he rules, Indra rules for 71 Chatur Yugas. He, this is his opulence over the three worlds. And that position uh, cannot, is very, is durlabha, is virtually impossible to obtain um, by uh, even an emperor. Uh, 
even a great king like me because uh, there is always the possibility of some uh, fault in the execution of one's material duties and because it is extremely difficult to carry out a hundred Ashwamedha sacrifices. Haya Uche Shravayasya Gaja Hayarama Tomaha Kamatu Gaur Upavanam Nandanam Chambi Rajate Uche Shravayasya's horse and Ayaramata is mighty elephant. His cow can be milked for any desire and his garden is the resplendent Nandanam. Ayo Mahan Gadesha Mahan Amrutam Matalod Bhutataya Sarvasrekta Gunavakwa. This horse is great, his element is great because they possess uh, most excellent features because they were uh, born at the time of the churning for nectar. The king proposes that among all the demigods in heaven, their king Indra is the most special recipient of Krishna's mercy. Indra is free to curse or, best, or bestow benedictions as he likes, whereas other demigods can only respond to the specific requests of their devotees. The king says, I'm just a ruler of a few districts, but the king of heaven gives life to the universe. He rules the three worlds for a span of time unimaginable to a small king like me. Theoretically, one can attain the post of Indra by performing 100 faultless Ashwamedha sacrifices. But even the rare king competent to attempt such a performance is almost sure to commit some mistake in the course of them. Indra's horse and elephant are greater than all others because they were born from the churning of the milk ocean, which you can read in the eighth canto. In that garden, or desired trees like the Parijata, whose flowers yield whatever one may wish. Those trees adorned with desire yielding creepers assume whatever forms one may like. Yatranandane, in that garden, refers to that Nandana Kanana garden. Kamapuru Pura Katomeva Hyeshamiti. How they fulfill designs is stated in text 74. Yesha make a pushpena yatha kamun susinjati. Vichitra gita vadetra nitya vesha shanadikam. Even a single flower from those trees can fully satisfy one's desires, whether for wonderful songs and music, splendid dances, bright clothing and ornaments, good food, or anything else. All of one's desires can be satisfied. But the ratio of Bhushana, the word Vesha, that is that. Vesha refers to um, ornamental clothing. Adi Shantena Pana Shayanasan Adi. And the word Adikam and so on. Uh, refers to good drinks, um, a good bed to sleep on, good chairs to sit on, and so on. Ah, uh, the title must be very described. Ah, Kimbachum Paramatasya, Sobhagyam Bhagavan Gata. And oh, how can I even describe Indra's greatest fortune? The personality of Godhead Vishnu has taken the form of Vamana Dev and become his younger brother. It is not just that. Lord Vishnu has become the younger brother of Indra. He also behaves as a younger brother. That is stated in Exam 6. 
आपभ्योयम असौरक्षण हर्षयन ये न विस्तृता साक्षात स्वीकृते पूजा पूजा साक्षात स्वीकृत स्वयं पूजा द्रव्यम ग्रहण Lord Vishnu personally accepts the objects uh, used to worship him. The objects that Indra uses to worship him. Thus is all bhagya viti purve na yuva anva yaha. So this is the great fortune, good fortune of Indra. Tat tadiyam so bhagya muta api param api kanishta bhatat tuena shiv Vishnu lara na adikam. So you know about his good fortune. You know that more than this, he uh, affectionately takes care of Sri Vishnu, considering him to be his younger brother. Yadva yaduktam adukta adam yachat pumeva janasi. I maham tad varnaya mityamsa. And you know much more than this. What is there for me to say? Lord Bhagwan is not India's brother, Indra's brother only in theory. He acts as a younger brother, sure, allowing Indra the pleasure of taking care of him. Indra insists on worshiping him as God, but Vamana Dev reciprocates by gracefully accepting the offerings and person. Iti Shri Bhagavan Tamrade Bhagavat Kripa Sadhu Nidhar Khande Bhavo Nama Prathama Jnaya. Thus ends the first chapter of Part One of Shri Sanatan Goswami Prabhu Bhagavatam with the title "Bhoma on the Earth." We continue. Dutiyo dhyaya, divya, divya in heaven. Narvasi is Bhagavan Dev and Indra. Dikdashini. Uh, Shri Sanatan Goswami's own commentary begins with the Adi Dhyaya Indra Krishna Sya Parama Prastha Nirnagi. मत्योत्कर्षोचापेक्षितो इन द फर्स्ट चैप्टर इन दिस बुक वाइल डिस्क्राइबिंग हु इज दियर मोस्ट टू कृष्णा इट वॉज पॉइंटेड आउट दैट एक्सॉल्टेड एंड लोली फीचर्स ऑफ मॉटल्स आर एक्चुअली हैव बीन डिस्क्राइब Uh, in order to help us understand what is actually inferior what is actually superior aha dhye aha dhya ye dvati hetu tathaivendra swayam bhuvo utkarsham apakarsham cha nikrishto utkrishta vikshaya so it was pointed out that uh, uh, in in the second chapter it is pointed out that between indra and swayam bhu brahma uh, initially indra's glory is presented and then his uh defects are presented same thing with swayambhu brahma shri parikshit vacha prashasya tam maharaj swarnato manirikshata rajamanam sabha madhye vishnu deva ganay vritam shri parikshit sir After praising the great king, Narada made his way to heaven. There, in the assembly hall, he saw Lord Vishnu in all his brilliance, surrounded by hosts of demigods. In the first chapter, Narada Muni began a search for the dearest devotee of Krishna by investigating comparative excellence in the devotion service found on earth. In the second chapter, Narada sees the superior devotion of Lord Indra and Lord Brahma. Swaha swargam gataha san Muni ke shri. चतुर्थ 
विचित्र कल्प द्रुम पुष्प माला विलेप मुकुषा वसनामृता समर्चित दिव्य तरोपचारे सुखोपिष्ट गरुस्य पृष्ठे was decorated with sandalwood pulp divine ornaments and garlands and a garland made of berry flowers from the sacrifice sitting comfortably on the bank of on the back of garuda he was worshiped with celestial offerings puchara puchara okay uh, he was worshiped with most heavenly offerings celestial offerings offerings upachara padya and padya arunkya adayah shodash chatushashti rupa so he was um <coughs> offered padya water to wash his feet arunkya water with which to welcome and so on um in 16 or 64 items so vishesho विष्णु भक्ति चंद्रोदयादि ग्रंथिव्यम ज्ञातव्य डीटेल्स ऑफ दिस शुड बी लर्न फ्रॉम बुक्स सच एस द विष्णु भक्ति चंद्रोदय बृहस्पति प्रभृति भिस्तूयमान महर्षि लाल्यमान मदिता हर्षयन प्रियोक्ति बृहस्पति नादर एक्सोटेड सेज इज प्रेज दिस ग्लोरी सन मदर अदिति पैंपर्ड He in turn delighted each of them with his affectionate comments. Aditya matra lalyamana omala hasta talas parsha dina nandyamana tan deva dina mukashimsya harshyanta. He was pampered by his mother Aditi. Um, she touched his uh, soft uh, lotus hands. So in this way, uh, she was pampering him, while he delighted those devas as well as the great sages. Siddha vidya dragan dharva soro bhiru bhiru istavai jaya shabde vatya vidya nandya shya paritoshi tam siddhas vidya devas and dharmas and asuras who sang the prayers they cried all glories to you. And sang, danced, and played music all for his pleasure. So he was being satisfied by all of them. So that he became tribhi, even as the body he could go, but it was not. So he was being satisfied by the prayers and so on of very kinds offered by the sinners and so on. The three sinners that way, Jai Shabdeshya, Vidya Dharad, Vistu, Yatha Kramo. विद्यालय they uh, sang for his glory to uh, they engaged in instrumental music and so on so the others played instrumental music the andharvas were singing apsaras were dancing shakraya bhayam uchchu उच्चोक्तिया्राय दत्तम इंद्र
that uh, he should not be afraid of the daityas. Don't be afraid of the daityas. Having killed them, I will certainly protect you. So with his uh, uh, right uh, lotus and finger, he lifted it. And with a special mudra, he very explicitly made this point. Kirti Nama Shri Vishnu Patni. Kirti Devi is Lord Sri Vishnu's wife. Taya Atya Manam Upaskritya Nivedya Manam. So she very gracefully uh, 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 he was being very gracefully offered various items by her. Nilaya Ahritam Angushta Tarjanya Gram Yamakitam Sai. So with his fingers, he grasped uh, what she gave. Narada saw the demigods worshipping Lord Bhavanathir in the assembly hall of Indra, the Lord's elder brother. Shila Sanatana Goswami comments that the demigods were following one of two standards described in old textbooks on deity worship like Vishnu Bhakti Chandrodaya. The common standard in which 16 items are offered for the Lord's pleasure, beginning with Patya and Arkhya waters, or alternatively, a more elaborate worship with 64 items. While the worship was being performed, the Lord's mother Aditi held his soft hands and cared for him in various ways. The Siddhas recited prayers for his satisfaction. The Vidyadharas played musical instruments. The Gandharvas sang and the Apsaras danced. The Lord told Indra not to fear the Daityas, for the Lord would protect him, if necessary, by killing all the demons. As he said this, he raised his right lotus hand in the gesture of fearlessness. Abhayadana mudra. Then Kirti Devi, Lord Vamana's wife, lovingly offered him some betel nut she had carefully prepared. He happily took it between his thumb and first finger and elegantly placed it in his mouth. Even though, in accordance with what was stated previously, uh, Sri Narada uh, was primarily interested was only primarily interested in talking with Indra, not in seeing Sri Vishnu. Still, uh, because the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the chief amongst all the devas, uh, he wanted to exhibit a special glory of himself, um, greater than what is seen in Bhumi on Earth. So, uh, Prior, before the Lord could manifest his opulence, his eyes, Narada's eyes, uh, fell on the Supreme Lord, and therefore he, it is described that he saw the Supreme Lord. Still, it is an indication that uh, this is, from this we can understand that the Lord had a special mercy for Chakra or Indra. Eva Magre Brahmaloka This should be inferred to be happening even in Brahmaloka. Even when he goes to Brahmaloka, he will notice the Lord's mercy on Lord Brahma. And at that time also, you will uh, <coughs> see the Supreme Lord in Brahmaloka. Seeing all this, Narada was very much pleased. Although he had come to the court of heaven to meet Indra, he was first able to see the Supreme Lord worshipped by the assembled demigods. The worship was appropriate because Lord Bhavana is the most important resident of the heavenly region. In this scene, the Lord not only showed his supremacy, but also revealed his favor toward Indra by accepting his worship. Shakramcha tasya mahatmyam kirtayam tamuhurmuhu swasmin kritav pakaramscha Varnayantam Mahamuda <coughs> continuously chanting the Lord's glories. Indra described with great joy the ways the Lord had helped him in the past. Shakramcha Ekshata.
तस्य विष्णु महात्म्य भक्तवात्सल्य आदिकम स्वस्मिन चक्रे विषय कृतान निष्पादनादीन वर्णयंत नारद मुनि चक्र इंद्र इंद्र वॉज डिस्क्राइबिंग लॉर्ड विष्णु ग्लोरीज सच एस इज भक्तवात्सल्य इज अफेक्शन फॉर इज डिवॉटीज एंड इंद्र वॉज डिस्क्राइबिंग द वेरियस वेज लॉर्ड विष्णु हैड favored him um by getting by procuring the opulence of the three worlds when that had been seized by bali ate eva ananda ashudhara avashyam okay sahasra nayane ashudhara avashyam tam asane swiye nishannam tat parshve rajantam swabhuti Indra shone forth in his own opulence as he sat on his own throne next to the Lord, shedding from his thousand eyes a downpour of tears. Therefore, अतः अनंत अष्टम धारा वर्षन तम तस्य विष्णु पार्श्वे स्वीये इंद्रयासने निशन आसन सुविधुति चत्र चामरालंकार वाहनादिति श्रोतवान तो इंद्र He shed streams of tear. He was he sat on his own uh, throne next to that Lord Vishnu, and he shone with uh, his own opulences, with his unique uh, umbrella, with uh, the chamara fans. Uh, the various decorations that characterizes him with his vehicles and so on it was natural for indra the ruling king of heaven to have his own throne in his assembly hall yet while his servants stood by holding his royal paraphernalia his umbrella chamara fans and so on indra worshiped the supreme lord in the person of his younger brother indra loudly chanted the lord's glories describing the lord's kindness to his devotees and his other attractive qualities indra then recalled the special favors repeatedly shown him by the lord such as the lord's regaining for him the rulership of heaven which had been seized by balidaitya raj atha vishnu nijavase rakshantam anugamyatam tabhayam agatam shakram ashas ashas yo vachana radah Lord Vishnu then proceeded to his own residence. Indra followed him for some distance and then returned to the assembly hall where Narada greeted him and began to speak. Tam tadrsha maha bhagyavantam shakram sabhaya magatam santam uvacha Vishnu sakashat prastavasya ayoga vat ashasya jaya shir bhir abhinam bhir. Um. So Narada Muni spoke to uh, Shakra or Indra, who had uh, returned to his assembly hall. Indra was such a greatly fortunate person. Uh, in the presence of Lord Vishnu, it would have been inappropriate to talk about that about his glory. <coughs> Therefore. Narada Muni greeted him after Indra returned to his assembly hall without Lord Vishnu. Ashasya, the Yashir Bhir Abhinam Bhir. Narada greeted him uh, by saying, by blessing him, uh, "May you be victorious." It would have been inappropriate for Narada to distort his mind to Indra while Indra was worshiping Lord Vishnu. Now that the Lord had left, Narada greeted Indra, saying, "Glory to you." Please accept my blessings. Then Narada praises Indra. Good. 
bin da. Set this. Prem dostum da kum. Hare Krishna. Can you hear me, Prabhuji? Yeah. Danda Prabhuji. So I'm asking this question. I hope I'm not committing any offense at the lotus feet of the demigods by asking this question. So I beg forgiveness first for asking. That's why I'm asking it as a question because I don't understand. I'm bewildered. Uh, we heard the statement where you translated one of the verse or text as that the demigods are glorious and they are sinless, etc. All that we saw. So how do we understand, Prabhuji, this? Uh, because we hear from Bhagavatam that uh, that um, King Indra went and he enjoyed with Gautam Rishi's wife and then the moon god, he kidnapped Brahaspati's wife. So this is all very bewildering. How do we understand this statement in light of that? I mean, can you throw some light on that? And I'm sorry, I apologize once again if, if this statement... Occasionally, in order to make them humble, the Supreme Lord himself impels them to do something wrong and then receive a lot of criticism, condemnation and uh, go in the record. They are Sakama Bhaktas who want to become Nishkama Bhaktas. Through experience of uh, the fulfillment of their material desires. Therefore, you know, they're they are on the slow track. They're on the gradual track. They uh, want to attain spiritual realization uh -huh. gradually, very, very gradually. We know Artoji ki asura arthati yani cha bharatarshapa Chaturvitha vajante imam jana sukriti nor jana Artoji ki asura arthati yani cha bharatarshapa So Shri Paradeva Devotional Prabhu says that jnani refers to a person who has knowledge about his position the position of the Supreme Lord and the relationship between oneself and the Supreme Lord in other words, he has knowledge of the Sambandha. Uh, whereas the first three, uh, they are interested, they have their own motivations for coming to the Lord. So what happens to the first three? The first three, Bahunam Jamanamante, Gyanavan, Mam Prabhupati. After several lifetimes of going through a lot of material happiness. Then they come to the Jnana platform. They also become Jnanis, Jnanavan, same as Jnani, Maam Prabhupada, then they surrender onto the Supreme Lord. Also they were serenity, Samahatma Sudhara, in order to come to pure devotional platform. Now that takes several lifetimes. Gradually they come to that point. This is Satya Mukti, the path of gradual liberation. Um, Gradually, they become prepared uh, and end up in Brahma Loka. And when Brahma is liberated, they are liberated. Of course, that's a Q system. <coughs> Not that every all demigods now are going to end up in Brahma's planet in this very life of this Brahma. That depends how much desires they have. Because they have a desire to become qualified for liberation from material existence. If you want to attain liberation from material existence, you simply cannot have any worldly desire. I cannot have any worldly desire. Whether it is overcoated by devotion service unto the Lord or not, I simply cannot have any worldly desire. So until that is a preliminary, it is a prerequisite. These are all prerequisites. So they want to become qualified. They, they have a desire for bhukti and they also have a desire for bhukti and they have a desire for bhakti. 
So while they become qualified for liberation from material existence in order to serve the Supreme Lord in Vaikuntha, they also have these desires. They want to go through these desires and get bored with them. So that, these are the Swanishthas. They are on the slow track. So if we also have such desires, we will also be put in the slow track. So whatever degree we have these desires, to that degree we will be progressing very slowly. By slow, I mean many, many lifetimes. You're talking of hundreds or thousands of lifetimes. They progress slowly. So therefore, it is not surprising that uh, they uh, seem to commit various mistakes. But uh, compared to their devotional achievements, uh, these are not uh, that terrible. However, from the perspective of those who want to attain the Supreme Lord in one lifetime, uh, this slow track is also criticized. In Vishnu Purana, for instance, um, it is taught that you should simply engage in devotion service until Lord Vishnu. Uh, in what we refer to as proper Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti, pure Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti. And uh, actually, it is like this. How do I show it? Uh, okay. Sure. <coughs> when we talk of Bhakti Yoga, uh, we are talking of two types of Bhakti Yoga. Okay. Let's start with that. We know that there is Shraddha, Sadhu Sangha, Vajana Kriya, and so on, until one attains Prema. We know that. But <coughs> Bhakti Yoga can be executed in two different ways. One is what is known as Pradhani uh, Bhuta Bhakti. Uh, one can Engage in maximized means, <clears throat> except for what one actually requires in his uh, to sustain his body. He is engaged in nine types of devotion service, one or more of nine types of devotion service all the time. So bhakti is very high, very much intense. Or just a small amount of time goes for fulfillment of one's material duties within dharma, no other, no sinful activities, no offenses, just to maintain one's body. This type of engagement in devotion service, Vishnu Chakravarti Kagur calls it Pradhani Bhuta Bhakti, which means maximized bhakti. Then <coughs> there's another track of that thing, that to pray. Uh, in which one actually engages in Kevala. Kevala Bhakti means uh, he actually gives up all material duties like a sannyasi. Only engages in devotional service. This is called it's exclusive engagement in Bhakti. Um, so we have two different types of, this is actually what we will study is uh, Raga Bhakti and this is Viti Bhakti. This takes you to Vaikuntha, this takes you to Goloka Vrindava. So from here, one can also go to this. It's not that you are condemned that you have to be here or there. You can go here. Uh, just as here in this track, one has faith. Unbreakable faith. Unbreakable faith in what? Unbreakable faith in Pradhani Muta Bhakti. That I should actually be engaged in devotion service unto the Supreme Lord. Uh, say, out of 18 hours a day, uh, maximized means something like 12 hours a day, I should be focused on devotion service unto the Supreme Lord. That is my main activity. But I need to maintain myself. So therefore, um, I spend the rest of that time in dealing with my family and this and that. But mainly my, my, my primary, primary activity is this. 
So if you have that type of shraddha, and he believes that if he executes that, then uh, he will be able to attain the highest perfection of uh, uh, love of the Supreme Personality of God. So you will have that kind of shraddha, that kind of sadhu, sangha, that kind of bhajan kriya, and so on. So this is within one lifetime one can attain the spiritual world. This is even faster than that. <clears throat> one can attain the Supreme Lord in Samadhi, even when he is within his body. <clears throat> Both are pure. This is pure because one has only a desire to please the Lord. And this is also pure. Uh, here also one has only the desire to please the Lord. However, there is the other type <coughs> minimized to Bhakti. That is Guni Bhuta Bhakti, that is not considered Bhakti Yoga at all. When one gives more time uh, for other activities and other achievements also. So that is not considered by Vishnu Chaturthi Thakur as Bhakti Yoga at all. <clears throat> because this person has to eventually end up in this track. Only then after he comes to this point. Uh, will he be considered a bhakti yoga? So these people and their material propensities are all first of all dealt with. And after their material desires are all exhausted and they only want to uh, attain love for the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord and satisfy him. Then they are brought into one of these two, uh, this one, actually they're brought into this, this uh, track. But this may happen much later, then this they may come to this point only when they reach uh, Brahma Loka or somewhere like that. Brahma is pure. But to come to that point of understanding this, grasping it, will take time. So these demigods, they are <coughs> valued. They're valued by Lord Vishnu because they do, they are not opposed to the progress. Um, you know, they still. There are many demigods who actually want to attain by Kuntra, want to become qualified to attain by Kuntra. So they're going through it. They're going through it. And therefore, they are, uh, because they, the moment you bring in material desires, you bring in competition. The moment you bring in competition, then somebody is trying to, each one is trying to pull each other's legs and so on. And then things become ugly because the moment we enter into the field of trying to fulfill our material propensities, there are all kinds of mistakes we commit. All kinds of mistakes. But the Lord is so kind, he forgives. He forgives. In sixth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, <clears throat> um, Sridhar Swami points out that the subject matter that is discussed is Poshanam, the Supreme Lord's nourishing his devotees. And he points out that in the sixth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, the Lord's nourishment of Two different types of uh, devotees has been pointed out. Nourishment means he forgives you for your previous offenses. But the moment you repent, he forgives. One example is taken from the world of human beings, Ajamila. Another example is taken from the world of the devas, Indra. Indra also commits a great offense, kills a Brahmana, Vritra. But then the Lord forgives him eventually. He accepts him. That is called portion of the Lord's nourishing his devotees to help them grow. So, Prabhuji, can we say then that the type of bhakti being followed by the demigods and the process which is given to us by Prabhupada are totally different? Prabhupada has given us a process by sadhana bhakti, we can go to Raganuga bhakti. Whereas, can we say the demigods are no, 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 no. Raganuga sadhana bhakti and there is Vaidhi sadhana bhakti? Both there are two different forms of sadhana bhakti. Yeah, so so we, we follow Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti, right? By which we hope to be elevated to... Well, you can shift, you know, if you get uh, upgraded to a different track. These are actually two different tracks, even though they may look very similar. At any point, if we get uh, the blessing then from Vajana Kriya here, you can go to Vajana Kriya here. And you go up. So can we say that the demigods are following Karma Yoga or something, or what are they following actually? Yeah, they are uh, engaged in... Uh, uh, karma Yoga, 
to move towards jnana yoga and to move towards uh, bhakti yoga so ours is definitely not karma yoga right ours is uh, sadhana well, bhakti we also bhakti. start with karma only most of us are what we are doing most no i mean them... now the, i am talking on the process given to us by prabhupad once we take that up no but even uh, even uh, for uh, see it is like this <coughs> where is that See, even for us, Prabhupada is recommending this only. He is not recommending minimized bhakti. He is not saying you be a congregation member and you know some few hours a day you do Krishna consciousness. He is saying you give up all that and you do this. So this is why the sadhana bhakti, right? With which we hope to be elevated to Raghunath yes. bhakti sometime. It's okay, but uh, see, first of all, in this process. The primary activity is uh, devotional service unto the Supreme Lord. Time, it's not simply some consciousness. You know? no, no need to delude ourselves like this. Time. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, in the Ramanuja system, this is, this is what they consider to be surrender unto the Supreme Lord. This is what they consider to be surrender unto the Supreme Lord. And they expect that you spend 12 hours a day in devotional service unto the Supreme Lord, 6 hours to maintain yourself and your dependence on whatever. So you need to have that degree of unbreakable faith in the Lord. If you think that, no, oh, if I do that, it's highly impractical. That means you don't have faith in Krishna at all. You don't have faith in Narayana at all. You don't have faith. Basically, you don't. You haven't come to that degree of faith. Your faith is actually like the faith of the, those engaged in minimized yeah, Something little bit, you'll take some diksha, you'll do first engine, second engine, think something, something, something you'll do. And, uh, you know, no, at least he has that much faith. There are non-devotees who would think that even if you chant 16 rounds, it's a waste of time. There are so many non-devotees who think like that. Relatives of devotees and all, they think like that. That means they don't even have faith that a few hours a day you should engage in Krishna consciousness. Whereas some others have this much faith that I should do at least few hours a day I must do. That is minimized bhakti. Maximized bhakti means basically this is my life. This is my life. Everything else is just an add-on. Just a tinge of uh, you know, time for material duties. It's just a tinge. So if we come to this, then this is known as Pradhani Bhuta Bhakti. Pradhani Bhuta Bhakti is very powerful. Within one lifetime, it will take you to Vaikuntha. <coughs> Extremely powerful. Then I have to decide whether I am ready to come to the point of Kevala Bhakti. What does it mean? Now I have no desire to engage in Kevala Bhakti. Then where is the question of Raga and this and that? That is that raga. That is that raga bhakti. You close your eyes and you jump towards Krishna with unbreakable faith. Unbreakable faith means even if you fall on the ground, you simply don't care. You simply run. Not that, oh, see, that means Krishna is not there. You know, the stupidity is made. It has to be based on Sambandha Gyan. It has to be based on knowledge, understanding, realization. Direct experience in one's interaction with Krishna. Unless one has that, what is this? It's not some blind sentiment. It is enlightened the sentiment. So this is blazing. This is hot. And minimized bhakti is warm. So if somebody wants to you know, travel by a bullock cart, that's his choice. If somebody wants to travel by a train, that's his choice. And you want to catch a flight? That's your choice. You want to pay more or pay less? That's also your choice. But when the devas do, uh, they are also exalted devotees. Not that just because, just like for instance, <coughs> we may be catching a lift. And that may be a staircase. And somebody might have uh, climbed the staircase. He might have reached, let's say, the 10th floor. I am also coming to the 10th floor. But he reached me before uh, I reached. So now I cannot say that uh, I am superior to him. Because he came before me. He might have climbed the stairs. But he came before me. He is on that platform. How we came, that's a different issue. But he came. He has come to that point. So that is something to consider also.
Anything else? Okay. For the discussions, we can have it on Telegram. Manchakal Kudru, we are sure to pass on to you. We are sure to pass on to you. We are sure to pass on to you.